Hey, welcome back. Today we are going to install a solar charge controller into the Grenadier, and we're going to use a unit that essentially connects directly to the SmartPass 120 that comes with the Grenadier's dual battery setup. So this is going to be used for the Grenadier that already has the dual batteries in it. So what do we need to do this install? Well, for parts, the first thing and most important is actually the SeaTac 250SE, D250SE, and this is a solar charge controller as well as a charge conditioner, I believe. I'm not sure what you actually call those, uh, but this connects directly to the 120 and works in conjunction with the 120. You also need a way to connect those two units. I'm using the bus bars that come from SeaTech. If you can't get a hold of these, I, I got these directly from SeaTech. If you can't get a hold of these, you can have uh, short battery cables put together as well. We also need a way to mount the two units once you get them into the vehicle. For that, we are using the Black Sheep mounting bracket. This comes from Switzerland. Uh, so we had to order this from Europe. Uh, I'm not sure if there are folks in the US now that are making these, but uh, this one was sort of the first to the market. We grabbed it and the mounting hardware so that you can put the units onto the mounting bracket. We also need a couple battery cables so that we can connect the uh, power to the 250. I have MC4 pigtails that I'm going to use to connect my solar charger to this. Now our solar panel is a portable solar panel. We use it for multiple vehicles and multiple devices. So that's why we're using the MC4 connectors and we're using a piggyback because we're going to just use an extension cord to connect this. If we were using sort of permanently mounted solar panels on the unit or standalone solar panels that we only use for this vehicle, I would probably use something like an Anderson plug. But since we already have these and this is what connects to our panels, we're using the MC4. We have a 30 amp fuse that we're going to wire into the solar charger. And for tools, you're going to need a variety of hex wrenches. We've just basically got a set that goes from size one and a half to size six. You're going to need a T25 Torx bit, a T15 Torx bit, a 10 millimeter socket, and for convenience, I have a small pick. Now I might've missed something once we dig into this, but if I do, I'll mention it. The first step in the process, we're gonna go ahead and mount the 250 onto the black sheet bracket. It's cold out here today, so we're going to go in the house, do that, and we'll be right back out. And here we go. It is mounted on the plate. That is the easiest thing, I think, that we're going to do today. So now let's dig into the actual vehicle and see what we need to do. So the first thing that we need to do inside the vehicle is to disconnect the batteries. We don't want any power going to this. And as you can see, the auxiliary battery has no cover and is easy to get to. But the starter battery is covered by a plastic plate. So we need to remove that plate as best we can. We don't have to take it all the way off to get to the battery, but we do need to move it aside to get to the terminals. So the first thing is to remove these two Torx bits, and that is simply a T25 Torx bit. One thing I do like to do when I'm doing projects like this, because it's so easy to misplace these little screws, is I have a magnetic bowl, and I just connect that to the vehicle, throw the screws into the bowl. Those things are really handy. So the second set of bolts that hold that plastic cover on are under the floor pad. So we need to pull that out. And then once I get that out, I'll show you where the bolts are. And this really is pretty easy. You just pull up on it. It is tucked up under the sill here. So you have to just pull towards the center and it pops right out. And here you can see you have two little caps. There's one on each side. And to make it easy to get to the bolts, I just have this little pick. I go behind it and I pop the lid up and there's the 10 millimeter nut that you have to remove to get this plastic piece out of the way so you can disconnect the starter battery. So let's get these undone and if anybody's curious there is your floor plug. If you want to rinse out the inside that's the plug that you take out. And now we can move this out of the way enough to get to the negative cable to disconnect that starter battery. Okay. Power is disconnected to the starter battery here. There we go. 
that's out of the way. Now we're gonna disconnect the auxiliary battery. And I know I was gonna tell you the size, these are also 10 millimeters. So pretty easy with just using that one socket. And as you can see, we've now got an error on our Smart Pass 120 showing that you've lost connections. We now have the negative disconnected from the auxiliary battery and you can see that you've got quite a few accessories attached to that already. That's also where we're going to connect the negative for the 250. All right, now we're going to go ahead and disconnect the smart pass, and that's just a hex nut. The mounting bolts for the 120 are a T15 Torx bit. If you have a T-handle bit, <laughs> that would be nice. I don't have one. So to loosen these, I'm just going to use my bit and a pair of pliers, get that initial turn done. Get all four of those loosened up, and I will be right back. We've removed the four bolts. As you can see, this is loose. Now we have not disconnected the temperature gauge and the negative wire on this, so we're gonna leave this loose. But there is a bracket down here that's threaded the bolts that we took out are going to be too short for the black sheet bracket, so they did supply some longer brackets. So now we need to go ahead and slide that in, set this on top, and get it bolted back down. Okay, now we have to slide the bracket in, I believe, because we have the seat brackets there. The best way is just to go from the front, slide it in under the 120, sort of like this. Get it up so it's over. And I think we've made some headway here. There we go. Now that's in, but we do need to make sure that we get this lined up. All right, there it is. Pretty well. Lined up, now it's just finding the mounting holes. Kind of hard to see down in there. But I believe there it is. So, let's now get the longer bolts for the 120, get that started, and then we can snug them all up. Nope, it's a little elusive. So it's just a matter of getting things lined up here. This may be the chore of the whole job right here. All right, we have managed to get these in. It's a little snug, as you can see here. The temperature gauge bracket fits up tight against the seat bracket. And in the back, the plastic was in the way, so you had to lift that up slightly to get this back behind it. But we've got that snugged up, so now we have to make the connections. So first thing we're gonna connect is the negative wire from the 250 to the battery and the solar pigtail. All right, the 250 says to put a 30 amp fuse on the positive side of the solar. So that's what we're doing here. We're going to connect a battery cable, which is what we're gonna actually connect to the 250. And then the positive side of our MC4 piggy tail, we're going to connect to the other side. So my idea is that I'm going to leave this pigtail just down here in the open gap. So I'm going to connect it, then I'm going to tuck it down there when I need it. I'll just pull it out, connect my solar extension to it. And also, just so you know, SeaTech does give torque specs for the battery connector cables and the mounting bolts, but they are in inch pounds. And I do not have an inch pound torque wrench, so I'm gonna to torque these down snug, but I'm not gonna crank on them. So the first one that goes in is our positive from the solar pigtail. And when we connect the negative, we're also going to 
connect the negative that's going to go and ground us to the battery. All right, I'm gonna tap this negative battery right into the grouping that's already grounded. Makes it very easy to connect this stuff up. And it just runs right under the plastic cover there, so easy to route back to the 250. Got the negative cable hooked to the battery and to the 250. I've got the solar pigtail connected. I left it hand tight so I could get the pigtail down on it to make sure it would tuck away. I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten everything up here. All right, that is done, but we are not done. Next thing we need to do is we need to connect the bus bars between the 250 and the 120. So let's get that done. And these slide in so we don't have to fully remove the battery post or the connection posts here. Leave the warning in place, it won't hurt anything. There's one. There's two. When we connect this, we also have to reconnect the positive battery cables. So let's get those started. And here we have it. The units are connected through the bus bar, positive battery cables from the main battery and the service battery are connected. Now we have to reconnect the main batteries. There are two other cables that come out of this 250. The black one is designed to tell the unit what battery voltage to use. Since these are flooded batteries, we're going to leave that unconnected. It's going to be a 14.4 volt charge. The other one is a smart alternator trigger. Enios, when they put the Grenadier together, did not connect that for the 120. So we're going to leave this off. It won't cause us any problems. We're going to leave this off, but I'm going to keep trying to figure out because the community seems to be somewhat confused on whether or not you should connect that or not. Some say you have to, others say you don't. So I'm going to leave it off until I know whether or not that needs to be connected. So anyway, that's what we're going to do with those, which is in essence, nothing. Just going to tuck those out of the way when we get done. They do come with a cover on them, so they're not going to touch anything and cause us any problems. Now we're going to go ahead and reconnect the negative battery cables. Then we have to connect the temperature probe from the 250 to the battery to make sure it's not overheating. And the instructions say to tape that as close to the positive battery terminal as you can. So I think that looks pretty good. So we have it installed. I was very happy to hear that engine turn over and start running. We don't have any air lights on either of the units and I didn't see smoke coming out of anything when I put it back together. So I believe we're good to go. I don't have any solar panel extension cord yet to test the solar. As soon as I get that, I will do that. Um, and one thing, the SeaTech 250 as a solar charge controller has a maximum open circuit voltage of 23 volts. My panels are 20, so I'm good. But just make sure you know your panel open circuit voltage before you choose this option because it may not be right for your application. And as expected, we do have some warning lights up on the dash from disconnecting the batteries. From what I've read is once you start driving, those will go away pretty quickly, or at least that's been everybody's experience. Got my fingers crossed that that is the case for me as well. After two hours, all of our dash lights are out, so everything has reset itself and uh, we are back to normal. So at the end of the day, our SeaTech 250 SE is in place and working as it should. All of our dash lights are out. We are good to go. It took about an hour, I would guess. Um, we were filming, so obviously that skewed the time, but I would say it's probably about an hour job if you have everything in place. And I will link everything that I used below so that you have kind of a checklist if you want to go through that. So overall, I would say it was a pretty easy to intermediate kind of uh, project. I can't wait to get the solar panels hooked up, see how they work. But in the meantime, if you like content like this, please take a moment to hit that sub button in the lower right hand corner. Give us a big thumbs up, share it with your like-minded friends, and as always, take care and we'll see you outdoors.